Yeah, so we'll talk one more time about the traveling salesman problem, and that's where one guy is visiting n cities. He starts and ends in the same city and visits each other city once. The question is, what is his optimal path? We talked about the brute force algorithm, which looks at every single possible path, calculates the cost, outputs the path of minimum cost. We also looked at the greedy algorithm, which gives you some ways of maybe finding somewhat more effective path to begin with, um, and maybe you don't end up having to look at all the paths. It is possible that you do ha end up having to look at all the paths or nearly all the paths, as you saw in homework one. One other algorithm, uh, which is better in some ways, um, is the held carp algorithm, also called the Bellman held carp algorithm, uh, discovered in 1962 by held and carp and independently discovered the same year by Bellman. This happens a lot in math, sometimes different mathematicians are discovering the same thing at the same time. Most famous example is calculus, discovered by Newton and Leibniz at the same time. That's why there's the different calculus notations. So the idea behind the held carp algorithm is to look at subpaths. Um, basically, if you have a path, an optimal path, from city 1 to city 10, then you can't have the path the subpath of that that goes from city one to city five be not optimal. There's no way. So ignore this graph for a minute. Um, we will come back to that. That does look familiar from last week. Um, in the held carp algorithm, you're going to be looking at the cost of going from, let's say, cities, city A to city B, but also visiting some other cities, let's say city P, uh, Q, and R. Then that is going to be the minimum of, let's say that set P, Q, and R is S then we're going to take some city C and S. So basically C is either P, Q, or R. And it's the minimum uh, cost going from A to C visiting still everything else in S. Everything else in S plus whatever um, your label on the graph is, the distance from that city C to your ending city B. And by doing this, you can um, get to larger and larger subpaths until you have the whole thing. So for example, um, like here's, here's some easy ones. So let's make this notation. Let's make uh, this be the cost from A to B of, and we'll just put PQR in brackets. So we're starting at A, ending at B, visiting PQ and R. That'll be notation for that. Okay, so we can calculate these ones pretty easily. Cost starting at O, ending at B, and also visiting city A. Well, there's only one way to do that. It's 2 and then 2, so that total cost is 4. And let's do one more like that, cost from O to B also visiting city C. Only one way to do that, we go this path four and this path one. So that total cost is five and so on. Okay, so these total three city paths are pretty easy to calculate, but then we can use those to calculate four city paths. Let's do cost starting at O going to C, but you also go through A and B in some order. Okay, well that is the minimum. You can either go from O to B and also visit A, and then put uh, add the distance from B to C so that we end at C. Or you can go from O to A and also visit B and then add the distance from A to C minimum of those two things. 
Okay, so that's the minimum of, let's see, well, we calculated that. O to B visiting A was 4, plus distance from B to C is 1. That looks pretty good. Or O to A visiting B, you've got to go along this 5 and this 2, so that would be 7. But that would have been stored. We would have calculated it in this step. Plus the distance from A to C, which is 9. Okay, that looks a lot less good. So then this cost is 5. Now we store this. So we always store all our previous costs. Then when we go to the next step, let's say we wanted to do something more complicated. Oh, sorry. Cost from O to D, also visiting A, B, and C. Well, then we would need the minimum Let's see, we could go cost from O to C, also visiting A and B, plus the distance from C to D. Or we could go cost from O to B, also visiting A and C, plus the distance from B to D. Or we could go cost from O to A, also visiting B and C, plus the distance from A to D. And then these three would already have been computed in the previous step. So we're increasing in size at every step. Okay, uh, so I do know what this is. This is 5. Distance from C to D is 6. Okay, so that guy's going to be 11. I would have calculated this, whatever that is, plus the distance from B to D, which is 16. So that's probably too big. Um, you can use some... You can combine some of these algorithms. Maybe you can keep that greedy algorithm principle there. Um, and then the cost from O to A going through BC, whatever that is, plus the distance from A to D, which is 1. So maybe that's smaller than 11, maybe not. And then we would store this. Except this is almost done. So once we've stored paths of this length, going from O to one of these cities visiting all the other cities, so we'll have this as some number. We'll also have calculated costs from O to C, visiting A, B, D, A, B, D. We'll have calculated cost from O to B, also visiting A, C, D. And we'll have calculated cost from O to A, also visiting B, C, D. Now we're almost done. Now we just take one of these and go back to O. So we calculate the minimum of this path plus the distance from D to O, and then the minimum, and this path plus the distance from C to O, this path distance from B to O, and this path plus the distance from A to O. And whatever the minimum of those four things is, is your final answer um, for your minimum traveling salesman path. Um, so, this is faster, so the brute force algorithm, and the worst case of the greedy algorithm also, ran an ON factorial. That's very, very, very slow. Um, it was constant space. We, we didn't need to store very much there. You basically only need to keep track of your minimum path. So you store one number to the next one, see if it's smaller, so on. OK. Um, held carp. Let's look at the complexity of that. Well, we have to look at all the subsets. Um, so there's two to the n subsets, and the way you count that, if there's n cities, we seem to switch from capital N to little n now in this lecture, that's okay. If there's n cities, each city is either in or out. So there's two choices. So, and there's n things, so remember this multiplication type counting argument. Two choices for the first city, in or out, in or out, in or out, in or out. That's 2 to the n subsets. And then on each subset, we have to pick a starting and ending position. So that depends on the size of the subset, but we can be a little bit generous in our big O calculations. So we'll just say there's n choices for starting, n choices for ending. 
So that's uh, n squared times 2 to the n. That's the number of things we have to calculate. And for each one, we're taking a minimum over. Now we have to pick this middle city that we're landing at. And that depends on the size of actually this s, which is less than the size of the whole subset. Um, but again, we can be a little bit generous and say we'll just multiply by another n for that. OK, so this health carp runs in O of n cubed times 2 to the n. That looks big. It's smaller than n factorial. 2 to the n is smaller than n factorial. n cubed is almost nothing. Uh, so good, it's faster. The problem is it stores more things. So that amount of time. Uh, but we need to store the cost for each of these subsets, because when we calculate the big one, you don't know which subsets you're going to need. So we need to store all of them. So that many, right? That many subsets with starting and ending points. So it takes this amount of time, and it also takes n squared times 2 to the n space. We made it faster. Not very fast, but faster. Uh, but we need more space requirements. And in computer science, that's always a trade-off. How fast are you going, and how much space do you need? Um, you might wonder if we can do it faster than this. This still doesn't look very fast. It is unknown whether there's a solution to the traveling salesman problem in O of 1.9999 to the n time. Unknown. If you can answer that, um, either find one or prove that there isn't one, then you will be very well known in mathematics and computer science.